started. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and thank South Elementary for having us this evening, getting everything set up. Um, and at this time, I'd like everyone to join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. We have to uh, switch this up on everybody a little bit tonight. Um, we're going to start something new at our board meetings. We are going to, at the school um, that we're having the board meeting at, we're going to have principal, I guess the principal, select someone to say our pledge. So the Pledge of Allegiance tonight is going to be led by a fifth grader here um, at South Elementary in Mrs. Duval's room, Ricky Knight. And he's going to lead us in our pledge. He is the son of Christine Harrison of Drakesboro. Okay. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Job, Thank you, Ricky. That was perfect. Thank you so much. You did a great job. Thank you, you did an awesome job. <laughs> okay, board members, we need to approve the minutes of our prior board meeting. We've all had these handed to us in our packets. Is there any changes that anyone wishes to make at this time? If not, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the prior board meeting. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Bowers. Second. Second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of approving the minutes of the prior board meeting, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Next, we need to go down to approving the agenda. I have a couple of additions to the agenda tonight. Um, for item F, I would like to add to consider additional um, fundraisers to the consent agenda. And item F, consider, I think I said that twice, consider compensating property tax rate for the 17-18 school year. I need a motion to add these items to the agenda. I have a motion by Mr. Johar. Second. A second by Ms. Lavelle. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. All opposed? I hear none. And I need a motion at this time to approve the agenda as it is. And I'll make that motion. Second. A second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of approving the agenda as it sits? Say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. We are down to recognitions. Miss Embry. Good evening, board members, Superintendent Davis, and all of you guests. We are one week into the 2017-18 school year and have started with a lot of positive energy from not only our faculty and staff and students, but the community as well. Last Wednesday, the West Campus of the high school was filled with our district employees. Our first session of the opening day event began in Martin Hall with all of our elementary, bus garage, and maintenance employees. Mr. Jimmy Page, author of One Word, presented an inspirational talk inspiring each to take action to do his or her best, followed by a talk by Superintendent Robbie Davis. Once the session was over, the group moved into West Campus Gym to enjoy a delicious brunch, entertainment, and door prizes, while a second session made their way into uh, Martin Hall, and that was comprised of the Middle and High School, Renaissance Center, Career High, and Center Office, Central Office employees. They listened to Mr. Jimmy Page again and Superintendent Robbie Davis. After the second session, the group moved into the gym and enjoyed a wonderful lunch, entertainment, and door prizes. 
This is the fourth year that our school district has been provided a meal to kick off our school year. Each year, Old National has played a huge role providing those meals. As a matter of fact, Old National not only provided the brunch and lunch and door prizes, but the entertainment and the decorations for both meals. Through their Tools for Schools project, Old National provided school supplies to all the Family Resource and Youth Service Centers. They had decorated their tables, our tables for both the brunch and the lunch. They were filled with school supplies. Those school supplies have already been distributed to our Family Resource Centers, so many students are taking advantage of that. This evening, I'd like to thank Old National Bank for their support of our school district. I'd like to ask Ms. Peggy Williams, Mr. Logan Porter, Ms. Jamie Wills to come forward so that we can recognize you for this. Thank you. Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis, would you give this? Would you present that to them? What can we get here? Thank you. Our pleasure, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you to O National Bank once again. And next, we're going to move down to our treasurer's report, Mr. Blitzinger. Chairman Rager, distinguished board members. Uh, these are the financials as of July 31st, 2017. Start with revenues. Uh, this month we had a total beginning balance of 16.9 million. Uh, seek revenue was 1.625 million. It's uh, important to note that this is down uh, $55,121 in comparison to the same period last year. This is a reflection of the decrease in enrollment uh, predictions that were sent into the state. Should enrollment go up, uh, the seek adjustment will be made mid-year and we will receive uh, more seek dollars. <coughs> Uh, taxes are at $993,269.99. This include tax payments that were recorded in period 13 of, of uh, the 2017 fiscal year. That includes that $891,000 franchise tax payment that we discussed last month. Uh, so therefore, it was an overall increase in monthly receipts of $666,029. Er, $666, uh, total revenues are at $20,844,000. They are down by approximately $2.1 million, uh, and that's due to the lower beginning balance in the month, and that is because of the four paychecks that were processed in, in June, or excuse me, July, uh, for the, the 185-day employees. I'm sorry, it, is, it was in June that they were processed, but it, it's reflected in July. <coughs> Apologize. Uh, expenditures this month. Uh, this month, uh, accounts payable came in at $552,565. Uh, that's, that's down approximately $1.1 million, and that was mainly due to the, uh, all the payments that were made in, in June. Uh, at to finish out the year. Uh, payroll was down significantly as well at $761,000. Uh, this is because only 12-month employees were paid during the month of July. So that's really because of the four, month, four paychecks that were done in June for 185-day employees. Uh, payroll breakdown. Uh, the gross pay was $606,000, uh, $596. Employee deductions were $212,801. Uh, which resulted in net pay of three hundred ninety-three thousand dollars seven hundred ninety-five. Excuse me, three hundred ninety-three thousand seven hundred ninety-five dollars. Uh, taxes were one hundred forty-two thousand nine hundred twenty-one dollars. Uh, KTRS payments were approximately fifty thousand uh, dollars. County retirement was approximately seventy thousand dollars. Insurance payments were eighty-six thousand dollars, and other payments were about eighteen thousand for a total of seven hundred sixty-one thousand six hundred eighty-eight dollars. Uh, the accounts payable breakdown 
Um, I'll read these off to you since they're small. Uh, fixed mix expenses were about 48% of all funds paid, which accounted for $257,000. Uh, variable expenses were about 34.5%, which is $184,000. And a utilities expense was uh, about 17%, which is $91,000. Uh, some of that, the utilities expense is down a little bit, and that was that's a reflection of setting the schools back into summer schedules and heating and cooling cycles. Uh, so the accounts payable breakdown, Total accounts payable was $532,844, excuse me. General fund of that general fund made up $366,000. Special revenue being fund two was almost $29,000. Construction was $75,000. That was, that was a payment made for the longest elementary roof. Debt, debt service was $61,667 and food service had $859 paid out. So the ledger balance at the close of the month was uh, $19.5 million. Of that, the cash uh, balance was $11 million. Uh, general fund investment of $8 million is, is in there, as well as the uh, $519,000 that's allocated to Greenville Elementary Library. Uh, so that balance uh, 11.4 million with 246,887 dollars in outstanding checks. So the cash at the close of the month is 11 million dollars. Uh, ledger balance is up two and a half million. This is due to fewer expenses, which is which were down by about 4.64 million, which is a combination of the accounts payable in June and uh, the payroll. <coughs> So breakdown of that cash balance, uh, general fund has 8.4 million, and that's down 6.2 million from the previous month. However, that's due to $8 million being moved to investment. So that's reflected further down in the in this uh, this ledger. Uh, that also the lower expenses offsets moving the $8 million. So just because we moved $8 million, it's not reflective in that $6 million decrease. Uh, Special revenue is up about $311,000. Construction is down to $75,000, which is the longest elementary roof payment. Debt service is at uh, $583,635.93. That's up $569,000. Uh, one thing I do want to mention that uh, in discussions with our auditors, our auditors are here this week and they'll be here next week as well. Uh, we've uh, Terry and myself and the auditors have discussed this debt service. What we're going to do instead of making these adjustments throughout the year, debt service is going to go into the negative. And at the end of the year, we'll do one fund transfer from our capital outlay, FSPK, and general fund if necessary to, uh, to, to zero that that fund out, the debt service fund. This allows for better tracking of our debt service so we can go and reconcile against uh, the payments that have been made and everything. And then that way our debt service, we can say, okay, this is where we are, this is where we're supposed to be. Everything re everything reconciles to each other. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot cleaner process. So the reason why I tell you that is because you'll see that go into the negative and it'll grow throughout the year as we make more and more debt payments. And you'll see that with this board bills because we do have a significant uh, debt payment that is being made for board bills this time. Uh, so uh, that, that makes a total of $19.5 million, which is up $2.5 million from the previous month. If you have any questions on the debt service, I'll be glad to go over that with you afterwards. Uh, it's really just a, it, it cleans up the accounting process and our auditors are completely on board with it. So uh, the extended financial picture, uh, I predict at, in December of 2017, a general fund balance of about $6.491 million. What I would like you to note on this, I've added that subtotal line. So there's, uh, it's about 14.491 million. But then when you subtract the $8 million that's in the just general investments, that's, that comes, that's where the 6.491 million comes from. Some finance good news that, we've, that I'd like to bring out this, this month is, a big one is uh, Ray Jones Lighting, the Ray Jones Park, the, the lighting for that and the electric bill. I, I want to say thank you publicly to uh, three, three, three people that were very uh, 
integral and part in getting us a lower rate for the Ray Jones Park. Tommy Barton, Steve Wells, and Carrie Davis, they spent numerous hours talking to the Public Service Commission, KU, uh, and, and all others, and also uh, Kathy, Ms. Ms. Jacoby as well, she helped us get in front of the right people. And so it was very, uh, very instrumental in getting this rate. So uh, I got the first bill, which is a 45 day period. We discussed this on Monday, but the, the first 30 days was about $3,500. And the second 15 days, or the, the next 15 days, was about $406. So we were going from about $3,500 a month to about $800. So that's an annual savings, approximately $18,000 annually. Um, also, this is kind of hot off the press. It's not in your in yours, but uh, Bremen Elementary pilot rate. I, I was able to. I was approached by KSBA, uh, getting Bremen Elementary on a pilot rate. Uh, it's a lower rate for the schools. Uh, the estimated savings annually is about four thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. So that's a that's a good thing. So I, I, and I, we do have a couple other schools on those. Um, that were done a, a while back. Uh, the central office roof, we went back to the uh, to the architect and I, basically I broke it down to cost per square foot and talked to the architect and said, I think the cost per square foot is a little bit too high. So we adjusted it down. It's about, it's been reduced about $20,000 in the estimates. Uh, GPS systems on buses. This is something that's uh, really neat as well. Uh, right now, the district plays about $6 per unit on our buses. We're in the process of implementing a GPS system that reduces the cost to about $1.79 per bus. And uh, also, we have a control system in which we can turn the GPS systems on and off. So during summer break, fall break, Christmas break. Any anytime there's a significant break, we'll turn the GPS unit off, and it'll further reduce the cost to the district. So, I think it's a significant savings, it's over 66 percent in savings. And then the compensating tax rate. I think this is something that's that's good for our district, and we're not seeking to increase it at this time. But does anyone have any questions? You know I do. All right. All right. So our eight million investment. Yes, ma'am. How do we come up with that number? In terms of like, like how why, why eight million dollars? That's right. Because in December it puts us at six point four that's million correct. at the end of the year. Um, so my thoughts are, um, we're saving this eight million, but why we should be looking at it for our kiddos? Why? Why eight million? How did we come up with that number? Well, and this kind of goes back to my thought process from day one, we have to look long term. So this is actually money that is that needed to be saved anyway for the long term expenses that may come up. My thought process behind eight million dollars was that I wanted to keep about five million dollars liquid and I also had my 2% contingency to consider. So that's about a little over six million dollars. So, with that said, I looked at the funds throughout the year and said, okay, we can invest $8 million. That's in a stepped uh, investment strategy. So, that $8 million, only uh, $8 million is going to be invested for two years, and then it's going to step down a $1 million. And then it'll step down further. As, as our balance decreases, that investment amount is going to step down. But our money needs to work for us. So... I'm not against that. I'm okay. just saying if there's needs, for instance, you hear moms and dads saying, hey, it would be so nice to have online registration. I don't have to go through all this paperwork every year for whatever reason, something to benefit sure. the parents and the citizens. And I look at this and I'm like, I'm not sure that $8 million is what should have been invested. I'm not against an investment. But why $8 million? And then turn right around and I think in one of the meetings it was going to be $10,000 to get software for online registration. And I just feel like that maybe we should consider looking into that. Like, uh, let's get this online paperwork. Well, fortunately, I kept $5 million, or $6 million liquid. 
I know, so but we the, can get $10,000 out the, of that. Let's invest this, but we're not really sure we want to spend $10,000 on software. So I just wanted to kind of make sure I understood why we chose $8 million to tuck away. Well, really the, the cost of the HVAC system, should anything go down, is about $5 million. So I said I wanted to keep that liquid at all times. Uh, and then again, like I said, the million, a little over a million dollars is 2%, the contingency amount. So that's where $6 million came from. Our lowest balance that I predicted was about 14, a little over $14 million. So I thought $8 million was a reasonable amount to invest. Uh, and I think it's going to give us the largest return over the course of time. And I will jump in just on the, the uh, online registration and all that is something Mr. Freeman has been very much on top of and we are actually looking pretty hard at that now. Uh, there's some issues with that getting all parents on parent portal, mm -hmm. uh, which is a process, but mm -hmm. that is definitely something we're interested in already, already working on. Or, or even the one-on-one -on -one devices. I see where other districts do the laptops. They get these students laptops like in eighth grade. They have the laptops through high school, and then they're their laptops for college or whatever career. And and it, I think the way I understand it, it loads textbook information on there. Anyone want to help me out with what I, uh, you understand what I'm saying? That there's opportunities out there to take, I don't know how much it would be, but certainly to get devices that could be utilized for um, students I think it's just you know want to I, I don't want to invest when I think that we could spend the money for the students but. <clears throat> and, and this was just brought up last month it wasn't board action what? The investment? It wasn't like we said we agree right. to invest the $8 million. It was he brought it to us and we are to accept the $8 million of investment that he's suggesting. So, okay, I don't think I really have any more questions. Okay. If there is any need, emergency, or any school principal, we have access. To, you have access. I do. Of two million dollars. And cash. unfortunately, we, you know, we've out of the eight million dollars, you have two million dollars liquid cash. I've got six million dollars liquid. Well, right now, I've got more than that liquid. I mean, I got eleven million dollars liquid. So if there is any project to be approved, we can look into. We, we, we can, we can fund it. That's fine. We don't want to stop any funding for the kids. There's, there's, there's nothing that would but prevent. Some, there's nothing that would prevent anything. Front of us to be approved. Correct. Okay. All right. Let's approve that. Okay. I need a motion to approve the treasurer's report. I make a motion. I have a motion by Mr. Johar. Second. Second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of approving the treasurer's report, say aye. 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 All opposed. I hear none. And payment of bills and salaries. Thank you, Chairman Rager, distinguished board members. This month, I bring $976,951 to you in uh, board bills. Uh, as I mentioned prior, there a significant portion of that is $659,000 uh, in debt service payments. A general fund accounts for $212,937. Uh, fund two payments, about $26,000. Construction is an additional $78,000. And food service, $912. Uh, the bills of significance, uh, Old National Wealth Management is the $659,000. Tremco, which is the longest elementary roof, is the $77,000 or $78,000 that I mentioned. Edmentum, which is software, is uh, approximately $59,000. And there was a, a Felix Martin Reed 180 type uh, purchase for $22,462. Are there any questions regarding bills and salaries payments? If not, I need a motion to approve. Mr. Johar has made a motion. I will second. All in favor of paying bills and salaries say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Payment of school bills? Are there any questions regarding payment of school bills? We've had a chance to review these in our packets as well. And if there are no questions or anything of concern, we need a motion to pay the school bills. 
Make a motion. A motion by Mr. Johar. Second. Second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of paying school bills, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. We are down to public participation. And we do not have any tonight at this time. So we're going to move along to um, administrative report, the superintendent's report. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Chairman Rager. Board members, uh, as I've said before, one thing I want to try to do is get a little more good news in front of you <coughs> kids and principals talking about their school. Uh, Mr. Wells, uh, you couldn't have got off to a much better start with uh, Mr. Knight saying the pledge. Thank you, for, thank you for that. You did a tremendous job. And so what I'd like to do first is just say the opening week, I'm, I'm so pleased with uh, everyone getting it done. Uh, everyone's just done an outstanding job to make. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to get things up and running, and I've seen that more than ever this year. But I'm going to let each principal talk. I've asked for a minute or two to see how it goes. I don't want to drag it on forever, but uh, this is something I'm kind of determined to do. We may have to cut back at times and do half one week, you know, one and one the other. But So we're going to start with Mr. Sharp, and if he adheres to this time limit, we'll probably be the shortest amount of time he's ever spoken. Uh, Mr. Sharp from Bremen. All right, thank you guys. This year uh, our school's focused on Eagle Pride moments and it's when a uh, student or a staff member shows high character, a high achievement, uh, growth in some area. So our teachers and staff submit that to me and I'm going to present that to send out an email thing. I want to share a couple. You have a picture up there. Uh, one of our staff members and a student, Ms. Robin Oldham and Riley Randolph. Riley asked her to wear the same shirt on a school day, so we thought that was an Eagle Pride moment. Um, we have another little boy, his name is Jude Gardner. He just today went and thanked all the lunch ladies for such a great food, great food, and it was very good, so that was one that we really liked. And then we have a young man named Jagger Groves, and a uh, teacher said, uh, submitted one for him. He was outside in the, on the, in the playground picking up trash, and nobody asked him to. So those were equal pride moments. If you're ever in our building and you see something, just submit it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Central City. Um, Board of Education and Chair uh, Mr. Um, I want to brag on our staff. We took on a new challenge this year for our professional development and we divided uh, our student body into a small list and each teacher, including homeroom teachers, arts and humanity teachers, special education teachers, speech teachers, and administration, took eight to two of the children, uh, partnered up with another uh, teach staff member, and we made home visits this summer to every child in our uh, our office. Uh, left with a tied golden tie bracelet, pencil, an invitation for back to school night. We've had lots of positive feedback from that. Uh, another thing we did is we did do the one word book study this summer and then on the teacher work guide, all of our staff painted a canvas with their one word and they have that displayed in the halls of school. Um, last thing we'll talk about is the things that we're doing to help celebrate the solar eclipse. Um, our teachers have been doing lessons with the students to get them to understand the solar eclipse. Our PTO has purchased t-shirts for all our faculty, staff, and students, and that will be distributed tomorrow. It says, in the dark, at CCES. Sorry, they were ordered before. We didn't know that it was going to be school. So, <laughs> um, that will be uh, given out tomorrow, and then we are going to go out, hopefully the weather will cooperate, onto the ball field and form an eclipse formation and we have a parent coming with a drone to take an overhead oh, shot. That's uh, great. For that. Go Central. <laughs> we also have um, purchased um, the uh, postal services, eclipse stamps. Mm -hmm. Every child will get a card. Oh, it tells nice. about the eclipse, it tells about the postage stamp and they will be able to use this as a keep site where they can get their name, their grade, their teacher, and then the eclipse stamp. Yeah. The stamp does show an yeah. eclipse. And you put your fingers on it, the moon disappears, and then you take your fingers off the sun, and yep. So the kids are really excited about that. And that will be distributed tomorrow along with the solar units for our students. Oh, Thank exciting. You. Thank you. Ms. Jones? Yes. 
Well, I also want to say that the one word is contagious in our building. Our school word this year is encourage. And we talked about not only encouraging, of course, the kids, but we also want to encourage each other as staff members. Um, many of the classrooms, as you walk around, you'll see each student is coming up with their one words for the year, and their classroom words are posted, so that's really neat. But I'm bringing with me tonight who could be, you all, the next Food Network star. I want Miss Elizabeth Kidd to please stand up for me. She actually is a sixth grader this year at South Middle School, Miller South Middle School. She was in fifth grade in Miss Belisle's class, and Miss Belisle is here with us tonight to support Elizabeth. But she participated in the uh, state 4-H uh, communication championship. She was the champion in the food category, and I bet you can't tell by her dress, but she mixed cherry dump cake. Oh. And we know firsthand that it was delicious because she came during our staff work days and oh. did her demonstration for the staff, and we got to enjoy her dump cake. So we were really excited to support her and very proud of Elizabeth. And her sister Catherine, who is also a black hawk, as we start tonight. <laughs> Mr. Hardison, he's not here. Board members, Mr. Davis, I have with me one of my students, Mr. Jesse Spurlin. Mom and dad here. Chris was one of our bus drivers, does an outstanding job for us. But Jesse, he's been a young man that I've seen a lot of great things out of the last number of years, and I'm very proud of him. And just his name popped up. We do something very similar to what Freeman does with compliments and, and good news and this and that. And one of his teachers, Jesse, one of his teachers sent me an email or sent an email to the whole staff bragging on Jesse for his selfless leadership. And I thought, his behavior, his example is what represents longest. And I want to share that with you tonight. So we're very proud of you, Jesse. Uh, he's going to do great things in, in his uh, future. Uh, he does set the example. And more importantly, he takes care of his, his fellow citizens and his classmates. So, great example you set for us, and we're very proud of it. Um, Thank you. I have to add, one word is taken over longest as well. We're very kind of energized at longest. And uh, uh, we did something similar to what uh, Central City did with our painting the one words. Uh, it's, it's contagious. And uh, we chose our one word for longest, and our one word is strong. Uh, Spartan Strong that took over. It beat out family by a couple votes. Post so we're very excited. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Mr. Wells. When I was hired several years ago, I was told three things. You need to take care of your students, your staff, and your $13 million school. And uh, I've got a very, very uh, strong group of custodians. I've asked them to be here tonight. I don't think Mr. Hardison's here. Back here in the back, I'm going to recognize two of our nighttime custodians. They are the finest of folks. Sherry Sheldon is a 10 year employee. She is our go to girl. She's been here longer than anybody else. And then our newest member to the staff is Mr. Adam Davis. They worked extremely hard this summer getting our building back together. They work hard every single day, every night, in the heat and in the sweat. It does get hot in the buildings at nighttime. They just do a wonderful job. Along with Mr. Hardison, uh, our head custodian, they did, a, they did a fantastic job this summer. There's three more folks I want to uh, recognize. They are retirees of this school, Ronnie and Donnie Tipton and Roger Carver. They came back during the summer and helped us out tremendously. That's uh, showing our new crew what they need to do on the floors and help us prep the gym. The gym uh, finished and uh, just a wonderful job and I wanted to recognize them for their outstanding work. Good job, guys. Mr. Rager, I'm, excuse me. I'm sorry. I thought you were, but no. Our thing this year is heavy. When you walk into the building, you saw our, uh, our poster. Uh, all, every person is capable. That's kind of where we're headed with that. Of course, the big thing right now is the eclipse. And since we're the home of the suns, uh, it's just it's been, it's been heavy. And we've got a lot of uh, excitement with that. We, uh, we jumped the gun and bought some glasses early on. <laughs> and uh, then we've got the viewers from Western Kentucky University. We've been doing all that we need to do to make sure that those kids are trained on how to use the viewers, how to use the glasses, 
getting them home to them. And hopefully, we're going to have awesome attendance tomorrow because everybody's going to want to come back, come back tomorrow mm -hmm. to get their glasses before they eclipse on, on Monday. And anytime the board wants to come by and visit our, our school and watch our staff and students in action, please come by. Thank you. Thank you. I guess our, our thing is hurry, right? Yes, apparently so. Board, rush. Board thing is rush. Hurry. Rush. I apologize, Mr. Wells. Mr. Rager. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to uh, brag on our uh, Beta Club accomplishments at the National Beta Convention. We had uh, students that placed in the top ten in the nation in five different categories. Uh, we have the first uh, national uh, vice president or any officer in the Beta Club and Buzzy Ashley. You know, he wasn't able to be, he's not able to be with us tonight. Uh, but uh, we're off to a great start. Um, just like everybody said, with one word uh, is contagious as well. Uh, going to classrooms and the teachers and the students are picking their words and uh, just an awesome start. Uh, uh, we're, we've started some things similar to the other schools. Caught you doing something good. Um, I stole something from Bell County High School principal at KSA. I do a shout out every morning, positive, something going on. First shout outs I did was uh, to our custodians and our front office staff cafeteria today the uh, bus drivers were there and I made sure that they could hear me on the, the PA system and say shout out to, to you to the bus drivers today and try to really some of the people that kind of feel undervalued in our in our school system and uh, so and uh, we do students every morning try to give a shout out to them caught you doing something good we're doing a little ticket system uh, try and get in the classrooms every day. Um, I had one student come up to me the other day and they're like, you know, you haven't been in the classroom yet. You said, you, you know, I missed you in the classroom. I was really pumped up. I'm like, you know, they really like me being in the classroom. I was, man, I was really pumped up. And then as soon as I left that student, another student runs up to me and says, I like Mr. Davis better. <laughs> okay, give me a chance. Mr. Davis had six years, I've had six days. So I was way up here, you know, because you know, they're wanting to be in the classroom, and then I don't know if Mr. Davis paid this child or not. Anyway, me and says that. So, but anyway, we're off to a great start. Uh, we've got a great staff. Uh, everybody's been positive. You know, it spins off of uh, John Gordon's uh, one word. Uh, our enrollment is up. I think we increased uh, 27 students from last year, so uh, that's a good thing. So, um, anyway, I think I'm close to two minutes. Um, so, uh, I so want you. yes, sir. I want to thank you for Friday taking care of the drop-off pickup line. Okay, it was well, it would have been a big thing on Friday, and by the time I got home, you had already sent an email, got taken care of, and okay. that was awesome. Thank you. And, and what happened was that we were always trying to improve, you know, and yep. try to make things better, and we had kind of an idea to try to make the, the, the uh, pickup process uh, better. It didn't work, and as Mr. Oh. Joe Hart said, uh, my new window pulled the plug, and I can't really take all the credit. Whenever uh, Officer Bart comes in from the Power and Police Department and says, this is enough, I've had enough, you can't do it anymore, then I go in and I make an all call and say, we're done. So but that's kind of how the process went. <laughs> well, Thank you. somehow you get took care of it. And Mr. Rager, anyone that knows how tight I am knows I didn't pay that child. <laughs> Mr. Lyle. Uh, I'd like to throw the first official flag on this positive thing that Miss Jones stole one of my kids. <laughs> uh, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't start positive news without talking about my custodians. I've got the four best. Sorry, guys, but I've, I've got the best four. Uh, they keep the building up and running. Uh, this summer they asked could we put some, some paint throughout the building and they really made the hallway just brighten up. When you come by, go down the sixth grade hallway, it looks phenomenal. And they did it. I, I've got to brag on the resourcefulness. It didn't cost a dime. They used paint that was just around the, the building. They did a phenomenal job. Good job. That's good. <laughs> good luck, yeah. uh, Brady Steele, a, an eighth grader, he wasn't able to be with us tonight, but he is a second place winner in the Kentucky School Bus Safety Poster Contest. Uh, so congratulations to him. Also our archery team placed ninth at World in Orlando. So very proud of them for that. Uh, as Mr. Rager said, our enrollment is up as well. We tipped over the 500 mark as of yesterday. Uh, so we're up about 20, 30 kids at this point from last year. And then I wanna hit on something that Shelly hit on Monday night that I thought was a great point. 
she, she mentioned, you know, what we're, what our in, industry is going to be looking at when they come to our district. One thing they want to see are great schools. And she mentioned that. And from our district retreat in Louisville this year, it just reminded me the great schools that we have here. I mean, the, the principals in this building or in this room, amazing. And, and there's not a day go by that I don't pick something up from one of them and use it. So just compliments to all of them. We have, what is it, seven? Eight. Eight, eight great schools. Nine. And there's nine great <laughs> schools in the district. So compliments to them guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Ms. Bumps? Uh, sorry, yes, Superintendent uh, Davis, board members. Um, I'll, I'll, just like the other principals, I definitely have uh, the greatest custodians around, as well as the cafeteria staff, because it's about uh, getting our kids in there fed. But I want to give a big shout out to our transportation department because Ms. Stokes was a successful day. <laughs> When we get on there safe and when we get them home safe. And our first few days were successful. So thanks to the transportation department and our awesome bus drivers and making sure that we did that. Uh, briefly, I, I, I've got just a couple of points in that we were getting to roll out our new um, attendance push that many of us are coming together from various stakeholders and trying to develop a, a great attendance program so that we can improve that, or I'm sorry, Red Book Live Spirit program to uh, help make that happen. Many of our high school students are competing at uh, FFA in FFA as well as uh, 4-H and other events at the state fair so very excited about those students and I'll give a shameless plug about our marching band uh, this Saturday is their uh, ice cream social begins at 5 with performances at 6 and 8 and our students would love to see you all there they also have awesome shirts this year probably my most favorite shirts ever 10 bucks I'll put that in there too and um, uh, probably one of the most exciting things uh, that about my kids and staff is that um, we got our ACT scores back and in every area we went up one point, but not just that. In uh, 07, 08, all juniors in the state of Kentucky began to take the uh, ACT, um, including when it was Muhlenberg North and Muhlenberg South. So looking at district totals in Muhlenberg County, all the way up to uh, the ninth year of Muhlenberg County High School, by my preliminary uh, data, uh, study. Uh, these are the highest scores that our students have ever done in New Bird County. So, quite there you go. Thank you, Ms. Bumps. Mr. Watkins. All right. Uh, good afternoon again. Uh, we've gotten off to a great start at the Renaissance Center. We have uh, four new teachers or four new staff members. Uh, we have 36 students enrolled in the alternative program, uh, 22 as of today uh, in the MOVE program. Uh, with new applicants coming in daily and uh, I guess the first great success of the year we had a student who uh, came to us he was a fifth year senior uh, failed to graduate this past spring he was one credit short uh, was actually 10 points short so uh, he came in and enrolled in the MOVE program uh, worked really hard uh, for a couple of days and I recovered that credit so he is now uh, a graduate he will not receive his diploma until the spring um, but he has received his credits to, to graduate so couldn't be any more proud of him and, and our staff as well and our program so thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you, principals. I'm extremely proud of you and the job you're doing. Yeah, obviously, it's a difficult job, and you're doing it very well. So thanks for the start you're off to. Speaking of enrollment, I have a quick enrollment report, I think, from Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, I, I've laid some uh, information on your desk regarding enrollment for our school district. Uh, you have, uh, for each of the, the schools in Muhlenberg County, you have um, uh, four columns, uh, one representing the first day for this current school year, uh, first day for uh, last school year, 16-17. Uh, uh, you also have a, a column for the last day of, of last school year, and then currently um, at 4 o'clock today, the enrollment um, for um, all the schools uh, for uh, Thursday, August the 17th. Uh, total numbers, uh, we had 4,556 on the very first day of school this year as compared to 4,716 last year. Uh, we are currently, as of again, 4 o'clock today, we're at 4,602. Um, that's down 160 from the first day if you compare first days, but we're up uh, 46 kids or 46 students from the first day of school since we started uh, last Thursday. So uh, just some um, information for you. We'll have obviously our 
uh, first uh, first month attendance reports um, at our next board meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Jimmy, is there anything we need to talk about with what's going on with maintenance, construction? Go ahead. Well, we uh, found out we got an issue with the uh, heat pump in the Commons area, one of the heat pumps in the Commons area at the East Campus. I think I have it in your packet that uh, we're requesting uh, uh, okay to purchase a more sun washing heat pump for the Commons area at the East Campus. Also, they don't know that, but we found another one. It's and uh, the rearview mirror and if you you think about that that's pretty close and so obviously that's pretty fairly traumatic could be I think some glass got on the driver and uh, but apparently she handled it extremely well the uh, monitor on there handled it extremely well Kim handled it extremely well calling parents Mr. Wells his staff here they just took care of business and took care of the kids with a tough situation I couldn't be more impressed with how they handled uh, you know potentially a much worse situation so uh, bus driver's name and monitor let's Jennifer Cobb and Beverly Nice with the monitor uh, and they just did a great job so I just I, I think they deserve uh, they deserve some mention there for the way they handled that situation I do want to thank the Confucius Institute for providing our solar viewers uh, when Western we had a little issue there and uh, they weren't going to come through but the Confucius Institute did and the last thing I have is uh, my PGP my professional growth plan I sent to each of you I believe and yeah. it's focusing on cultural leadership and so that's you know if there's anything <laughs> amendments or any, any other things you'd like to for me to add to that or change please let me know but that's that's my intent on my professional growth plan and uh, that's we'll see how this goes on the superintendent report I would like to do this if we don't run them too long and so we're, we're kind of playing with it a little bit so bear with us but uh, that's my superintendent report thank you mr. Ames. thank you yearly data security address mr. Wales Chair and Board, this is our data security yearly update. This law applies to protection of personal information. It applies to every state agency, including districts, and it applies to the vendors that we use. Not all the data we collect is considered confidential, but items labeled personal identification information, such as social security numbers, student numbers, medical info, those are considered confidential. What we do is only collect needed data. We need to retain it for only the minimum time required. We store our secure data securely. That includes paper files also. Uh, we need to encourage the use of strong passwords or passphrases. We need to make sure we have pins on smartphones that would have that could have a secure data on those. We're going to enforce mandatory password changes again this year. Make sure all record rooms are locked. We need to encourage our staff and methods to avoid phishing, malware, and clickbait. And we do have signed uh, forms from our vendors that do house personally identifiable information. And we are in compliance with this state law. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wells. <clears throat> now we have personnel actions. Ms. Browning. 
<coughs> These are the personnel actions for the period of July 13 through August 9th. Uh, certified personnel employment, there were 20 actions. Resignation of certified personnel, there were seven. Reassignment of certified personnel, there were 20 actions. Classified personnel employment, there were 28 actions. Resignation of classified personnel, there were five actions. And reassignment of classified personnel, there were 21 actions. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move, move on down to the board action items. The first one is to consider quality care contract. Ms. Roberts. Good evening, Chairman Rager and um, fellow board members. Uh, it is being requested that Milburgh County School System enter a memorandum of agreement with Quality Care for Kids program. Quality Care is a provider of hearing and vision screenings that are at no cost to the district. They operate similarly to School Smiles program that currently provides dental care for our students. The Quality Care providers would ultimately be responsible for the diagnostic and preventative services provided to students in this program. And they have licensed and certified staff technicians that would perform all the procedures that would normally be done in a standard optometry or audiology office. Um, so all they need are our facilities basically to provide these services. Um, Quality Care would work in collaboration with Family Resource and Youth Service Center coordinators to schedule their appointments. Approval would be obtained from parents or guardians to see the physicians at the school that would uh, be providing those vision and hearing services. They wouldn't do that without a consent form. Routine vision and hearing exams uh, would be provided and I've provided a list of the things that would be covered during an exam so that you can see what they would do during the eye exam, what they would be doing during the ear, ex ear exams. Quality Care will provide any Medicaid claims to cover 100% of treatment. Most insurances are accepted. Uh, insurance co-pays and deductibles do not apply to their program. They'll be written off by them. Uh, if a child is not covered by insurance or public aid, then vision and hearing screenings will be provided to that child also. Uh, if the results are not normal, the child is sent on through for a full exam and the problem is treated. These children will be seen as a professional courtesy and they will also write off these charges. A report card will be sent to the parents to let them know what they found out during the exams as well as a copy will be given to um, the school so that they can see what was provided for at that time and found. And also they would uh, give the school a copy of the eyeglass prescription if they did one so that they would have one and know uh, what the child had, what the prescription was going to be for the child. So anyway, Sherry Miller forwarded <coughs> edits that were suggested for the memorandum of agreement by Daniel Sherman to you today. She also forwarded the memorandum of agreement for, uh, from Quality Care for Kids that reflects these edits that he suggested. And so I was wondering at this time if you have any questions about anything related to Quality Care for Kids. Are there any questions regarding this? If not, I need a motion to accept the recommendation. I have a motion by Mr. Bowers and a second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of approving the memorandum of agreement for the quality care vision and hearing program for the 17-18 school year, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Thank you so much, and this is really going to benefit our students, and we appreciate it so much that you all did that. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have to approve school fees for the 2017-18 school year. Ms. Browning. In accordance with board policy, and I have given you all that in your uh, packet, all student fees must be approved by the Board of Education. Several years ago, the Board of Education decided to limit, el eliminate textbook and locker fees for students. They decided to provide all schools with an extra allotment on their site-based allocations, and there's a copy of that. I believe it's the uh, projected February. It's at the top in red. Um, and, it, and in your paper, it tells you what per age level that they are granted. The 2017-18 uh, 
um, fee schedules are attached to this. If uh, I think you all have had a chance to review those. So what I'm asking is that you approve these attached fee schedules for the 2017-18 school year. Okay, does anyone have any questions or concerns about the school fees? If not, I need a motion to approve. I have a motion by Mr. Johar, second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of approving the school fees for 2017-18 school year, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. And approve district assurances, Mr. Perkins. Board Chairman, uh, Board Members, as we've discussed at the work session earlier this week, the district funding assurances are in order, and unless you have any questions, I would ask that you entertain the opportunity to approve them for the year. You don't want to read all that? Pardon me? I said you don't want to read all of that? I can. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> are there any questions or anything regarding the district assurances plan? If not, I need a motion to approve. And I'll make the motion to approve. So moved. Second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of approving the district assurances say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. Thank you, Ms. Consider a memorandum of agreement with Hopkins County for services for the visual impaired. Ms. Penley. Um, thank you. And I'll try to make this quick because we actually brought this up in the board meeting um, last month. And so we discussed the rationale at that point in time. Um, but also in July, there was a date discrepancy on when the Hopkins County Board of Education and our Board of Education was meeting. So we were lagging on getting some of that paperwork um, and to know the final cost of this teacher. Um, but we still needed to move in July because we've, she's already been in our district twice um, since the beginning of school. And we really needed her to come. So tonight we do have that number uh, for you and um, the memorandum of agreement, the cost of that teacher for us for one day per week uh, will be um, almost $12,000 and that would come out of special education funds and so I recommend that we do enter into this agreement with Hopkins County Schools to provide that teacher of the visually impaired. I have a motion by Mr. Johar. Second. Second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of considering the memorandum of agreement with Hopkins County for services for the visual impaired, please say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. And now we're down to considering partnership with the Western Kentucky University Confucius Institute for placement of a Chinese teacher at Greenville Elementary for the 17-18 school year. Ms. Jones. Yes. Thank you. Um, I come to ask you to consider an additional partnership for Greenville Elementary, and I actually want to start by adding that this would be no cost to the district. That's very important to add, and I also want to thank Mr. Reger with his scheduling. That is what made it possible. The Chinese teachers are allotted 300 minutes of teaching per day and the schedule at the middle school called for a second and the need for a second teacher so this teacher would be at Greenville Elementary the majority of the day and then travel to North Middle School and teach the last period for 66 minutes at North Middle School okay are there any questions if not, I need to a motion to consider the partnership. I have a motion by Mr. Johar. Second. Second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of considering the partnership with Western Kentucky University for the placement of the Chinese teacher at the Greenville Elementary School for the 17-18 school year, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. And F <coughs> is the additional item to the agenda. And this is to consider the compensating property tax rate for the 17-18 school year. Mr. Blitzinger. I just want to add that the little girl that, that uh, Ms. Jones brought up beat my son out for, for that last year. So she did an awesome job. Um, but it's time to bring you consider the compensating property tax rate for the 17-18 school year. Each year the Board of Education is required to pass a tax rate for the current school year. Uh, last year the rate was set at 52.7. Uh, in order to keep in line with the proposed tax plan uh, that I had that I've laid out in the past, uh, the district should take the compensating rate this year and not seek the 4%. Uh, this would set the rate at 53.2% for the 2017-2018 school year. 
Uh, I'd also like to add that I did uh, get in touch with our PVA and uh, Mr. Davis and I are going to be meeting with him to discuss values in the future. But at this time, I'd ask that you approve the compensating tax rate for the 17 18 school year. Okay, I need a motion to approve the recommendation of setting the property tax rate at the compensating rate. So move. Have a motion by Mr. Bowers and a second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of approving the property tax rate to the compensating tax rate as allowed by the Kentucky Department of Education say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. We are now down to the board consent agenda. Board members, you've had a chance to review all of these items. And we did um, also on the approval of the agenda add a couple of the... Um, Who's selling the finest chocolates? I thought you were my friend. No, we bought, had a bunch of boxes I bought coming. five today, thank you. And I, I don't need those, but I'm going to give them to people in my house. They're good chocolates, Maybe though, I tell you that. No doubt. <laughs> All right. Are there any questions, <coughs> excuse me, regarding the um, board consent agenda? If not, I need a motion to approve. So move. A motion by Mr. Bowers, a second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of approving the board consent agenda, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. And I just want to say thank you all for sharing all your good stuff with your schools. So we want to hear more of that. And, and we as board members, we don't always get to know what's going on in the school, so in the areas in the school district. So it's, it's good for us. I think we've all enjoyed tonight and, and having this new new movement so um at this time i need a motion to adjourn so move. A motion by mr bar second by mr johar all in favor say aye aye, aye.